Greetings, Church at Sun Valley and friends. Today, I want to start a new devotional series called Side Effects. A few years ago, my wife had a brain tumor. And as we went through discovering what the process was to try to remove the brain tumor, and then after removing as much as they could, they began using chemo and radiation to shrink the tumor. And while they did that, there were side effects. The chemo caused issues, uh, messed up her other, some of her other bodily functions, and she began to have to take pills that would help with those. And then those pills sometimes had side effects and they might switch medication or they might give her a different medication that would deal with the side effects from those side effects. And as you can only imagine, and many of you have probably even experienced, now there's 10 pills every day that you've got to take. We watch on TV, they come out with a new drug that's going to solve this one problem. And it looks great until the very last five seconds of the commercial where they give you the side effects or the possible side effects. And when you listen to them, they're worse than the original problem. During this time of COVID-19 and shelter in place, I've been reading online about a lot of side effects that physicians and those in the know tell us are going to happen because of this and have already begun to happen. For instance, physical side effects that those who are not able to go to their job, maybe their industry is shut down. A physical side effect is not being able to pay your rent or being able to buy food on your own, feeling unproductive. Along with that are, are the physical side effects of those not being able to go work out like they normally do. Our, our country is full of hypertension and all these other uh, diseases caused by not being in shape. And so when when we're no longer able to work out, those tend to get worse. And with those, we also have physical and mental side effects of uh, depression and frustration and loneliness. And in the end, the side effects of the side effects that I was reading are that they expect alcoholism to go way up. They expect drug addiction to go way up. And they even expect suicide to go way up. So even though the prescription that we have of sheltering in place and trying not to be out with a bunch of people and, and spreading this disease, that the side effects of the side effects could be death as well. Now, this shouldn't really surprise us. As those who read scripture, we can see in Genesis how God created us. He created us first to have relationships. Obviously, our priority relationship should be with him. And no matter what shelter in place laws or COVID-19 virus side effects there are, nothing can separate us from our relationship with him. But we were also made for relationship with others. And this shelter in place has really hurt those. You know, we talked about all the way back in November that one of the things that God called us to do together is to worship together in person. And although right now the wise thing to do is not to do that and to have these online messages and online devotionals, it still doesn't satisfy completely that relational need. And we can see it with, with others that it, the loneliness and the frustration of not being able to have in-person conversations. Zoom and Google Hangouts are great, but it really doesn't completely take the place of being in person with someone. The other way God made us is he made us to work, to be productive. We can go all the way back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, and it says that God placed man in the Garden of Eden to work it and to watch it. That God made us to be productive. You know, sometimes I think we think back to the fall and, and where it says that Adam was forced, God told him he would have to really work hard the land and, and that there would be weeds and, and thistles and, and thorns and things that would make it more difficult. And so we think that really Adam never worked before then, but that's not true at all. Scripture says God placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it 
and to watch it. We all want to be productive. And, and the fact of the matter is many of you who are retired, you probably experienced this even before uh, shelter in place. The idea of trying to replace productivity from what you did before uh, to what you can do now. And so today, starting off our series on side effects, and we want to talk about uh, how do we deal with some of these different side effects, such as uh, fear, such as depression, such as loneliness, such as lack of patience. But today, I just really want to talk about dealing with the very first issues that we have. And, and, and to do that, I want us to, to make sure that we're not being deceived by the enemy. One of my favorite verses that, that I had my children memorize was Hebrews 3.13. Encourage one another daily while it's still called today so that no one falls into the deceitfulness of sin. You know, that the writer of Hebrews is saying, don't even wait till tomorrow. Encourage each other daily because we're so quick to believe the lies of the enemy. And one of the lies of the enemy that, that we believe is that we could distract ourselves from all these things. You know, the idea of reading that Netflix has has gone way up and, and, and the usage of Netflix and the usage of Amazon Prime Video and the usage of these different TV uh, networks and, and streaming services has gone way up. And, and there's nothing wrong with entertainment, but I think we've begun to believe the lies of the enemy that we just need to distract ourselves from all of this and that that'll make us feel better. But in the end, I, you know, I myself at times have recently watched some, some different TV shows and, and you get past an hour or so. And rather than feeling better, you, you start wondering, there's a sense of disconnect. And so Although I want us not to necessarily go, oh, the pastor said, don't, don't watch TV. I, I, I'm not saying that at all. But don't let the lie that you distract yourself and that'll make you feel better. Don't believe it. The fact of the matter is, uh, today, I just want us to maybe look at Psalms 1, 1 through 3. And it says this, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now that word law is talking about they had the first five books of the Bible is what we call them. Torah is what uh, the Jews would call it. But but the, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the understanding of the first time we see God he reveals himself to us, his character, what he calls us to. So, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, in these things, he meditates day and night. Now that word meditate, we often think of like some Eastern religion where you're, the goal is to completely remove anything in your mind and you just become blank. But that word there really is an idea of, of muse or even uh, the word soliloquy comes from it where you're talking to yourself. Uh, the idea is to, to think deeply, to think beyond just a quick casual glance. Now, I love uh, My Daily Bread and some of these other short devotionals we often read that have a few scriptures in it and then kind of tell us immediately what it means and then how we can apply it. Those are all great, and, and they give us a, a, a good idea, but, but that's not really what meditate means. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, stand in the way of sinners, sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now, does this mean he's meditating constantly all all hours that he is awake? Probably not. I mean, as I said, God made us to be productive, to work, and, and it's hard sometimes to do two things at once. Uh, oftentimes, though, we could do physical labor and, and be thinking about other things. But the fact of the matter is, 
day and night doesn't mean all day, all night, but it means at different times of the day, be, be meditating, be contemplating God's word. And then it tells us that that's the prescription. It tells us what the side effects of that look like. And he will be like a tree planted in streams of water, which bears fruit in its season and leaf does not wither. And whatever he does prospers. Now in the desert, we don't see a lot of streams of water. But if you go just north of us, there's the Hacienda uh, River. And it's interesting. I remember going with my children on a trip one time for the elementary school. And when we went, it was amazing because you drive up and there are no trees at all. And there's some scrub brushes and maybe a cactus or two, but no real what we would call trees. But you get up to the Hacienda and there along its banks are these huge trees. Why? Because there's constant water there. And the side effect is constant growth. We love growth. And if we want to see the side effect of growth in our life and of fruitfulness and of leaves not withering, I mean, the idea of trees. I had a tree one time that I planted in my backyard. And of course, our trees need watering. And so I had a, hooked up the, um, the, the water to it and had it on a timer. And it was doing okay for about a month. And I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it at the time because it's in my backyard. And normally I'm, if I'm looking at my yard, I'm in my front yard. And a couple of weeks later, I went back there and that thing was deader than dead. Come to find out the battery or the electricity that went to the timer had gone out and it wasn't receiving any water. And I saw the exact opposite of the Hacienda where you have these huge trees that are, that are just growing amazingly and instead you just have a dead tree wither. That's us. If we're not in God's word, not meditating it, not thinking about it, then we will wither. We will become less fruitful. I, I want to encourage you. This, this right now is a time where you can spend more time with the Lord than you normally do. You probably don't have as many activities as you have to do. And so this is a time where, where you can spend more time seeking after the Lord. And the side effects of seeking after the Lord are always positive. They're always blessed. One of the reasons why I like to sit on my front porch and study isn't just some people go, oh, poor, poor you, you don't have an office space. No, I, I love my porch because every day I get to look at the plants that I have in my front yard and I get to see the new growth. And even I have a patch of grass, I know, um, not fake grass, not artificial grass, but a, but a patch of real grass. And, and that real grass, we, I can honestly every day go and see some new growth. And it reminds me that, that God wants in my mind and my heart to grow things. For me to experience, not, not to just settle on, on where I've been, but to experience new things. So I want to encourage you first to, to really sp begin to spend time in God's word anew, differently maybe than you normally do. Take a book of the Bible and just begin to read it. And maybe you read part of the chapter in the morning and, and think about how that might affect you. Pray that the Lord would give you insight and then read the second half in the evening and meditate on God's word. You know, we want immediately immediate results. Uh, you may not be able to tell right now, but my right shoulder is absolutely killing me. Normally, I can go to a chiropractor and then a masseuse and I can, I can get it worked out. Well, I went to my chiropractor, but obviously you can't get a massage at this time. And so my, my shoulder just keeps hurting and I've tried everything. I've tried a TENS unit. I've tried a big handheld massager. I've tried to stretch it. I've tried to do yoga exercises to try to get it to calm down. I, I've tried all these different things and, and 
ibuprofen and sodium naproxen. And uh, I even, uh, well, I shouldn't tell you this, but I even took one of my wife's muscle relaxers. And yet nothing has really worked. You know, we want immediate results when we take some sort of prescription. But oftentimes, the results take a while. Going back to planting, one of the plants I always like to have are, are tomato plants. And, and as I plant them, you'd see them grow. And eventually, they'd, they'd have flowers. And then after a while, the, the flowers would finally fall off after they were pollinated. And then fruit would begin. Just a small little green thing. And it would grow and grow and grow. It wouldn't be really considered fruit for some time. But all the attention and watering that, that I gave it eventually found productivity. And so I want to encourage you not to think, well, if I do this one day and suddenly things haven't changed in my heart, my mind, that, that it didn't work. But honestly, to trust God. Remember, our whole time in, in this year is based on trusting God. It's some time where you can really put God's words and promises into action. So we trust God. We meditate on his word knowing that we will become productive and that will be produced in our heart and in our mind. And, and, and you know, the fruits of the spirit will begin to reveal themselves when we make this a regular practice. I hope you do this today. And along with that, I would practically also include uh, rather than just watching more TV, to find something productive to do. Maybe that's start a little garden. Maybe that's learn to knit. Um, I don't know what that might be for you. But begin to find something productive as well because you've been made to be productive. Now I'm going to pretend that I'm going to get a massage. And my back is going to miraculously feel a lot better. I hope you all have a great day. I look forward to talking to you more this week. And may you all be blessed.